Welcome, welcome, welcome finally to F1 23 My Team Career Mode. And today we will be jumping in to the My Team Null Driver, the My Team Career Mode. I hope you all enjoy this video very much as I did. And the goal of this whole series is to take our team, the worst team possible, and jump them up to become the best team in Formula One. And how do we do that? Well, we have to start out as a newcomer. No resources, no money, no, no, nothing. Absolutely nothing. As right here, we will be doing the full season. And next up, settings time. I hope you all will enjoy this career mode as much as you do. Obviously, the F122 My Team career mode obviously did not go so well. Um... Obviously, there's some things that a little bit annoy me with my team, and it's mainly because we haven't had that major overhaul yet that they've been, at, they they supposedly have been saying for, I think the past two F1 games because, um, hopefully we get a new my team kind of like involvement because again, I mean they've just been focusing so much on like everything else. So hopefully in F1 24 we will get that big old my team switcheroo and. Um, I hope that does become a thing because, uh, well, I feel like the game needs that, that, again, I feel like the game needs that career mode, and, uh, with my team and driver career, I feel like those two need some overhaul changes because, again, it's just not fair for, basically, fans to be struggling with just pain and being bored of F1, mainly the my team, which is kind of annoying, but at the same time, I think everything will get figured out. But anyways, we're going through the settings right here real quick. Um, a couple things that I do know that don't get showed. Yes, we will have faults on. Um, they will be on increase. We will have red flags. We will have basically every settings imaginable to be realistic. The difficulty is a bit iffy right now. Only because we'll have to figure that out. But anyways, we'll be using also the My Team icons as well. So you get to choose basically all the, IT, all the icons like Michael Schumacher, Mika Hakkinen, Ethan Senna, everybody else like that. And also, I believe, the breakboard characters as well. But first off, first things first, let's go create our character. Here you'll experience the world of Formula One, not only as a driver, but as the owner of a brand new F1 team. First things first, let's create your driver. So now it is the simple part of basically the My Team journey, which is basically um, figuring out our avatar. Um, there's not too many avatars, well there actually is a lot of avatars, I don't know why I said that, but there are some new avatars into the game, so uh, that is very much for true. Um, also, I don't think Lucas Blakely's in the game, which is kind of confusing because he just won the esports championship, which is kind of weird because they have every other esports champion in there. So, yeah, obviously um, we go for our names, obviously first name is Riley, last name is Fadden, and obviously now the difficult part is they never have the name in the audio signal so that's unfortunate they have a couple of the ones that just don't intrigue me i mean the ice man would be pretty cool but again i mean i don't i don't think my other nickname is in here at all um there's richardson but no 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 riley no nothing there's russell i guess ryan that ryan could be like the closest but um yeah i mean we could possibly do my middle name we could but uh, that would be, I don't know if Crofty can even say Joseph properly. So, <laughs> there's Johnson, so, <laughs> there's no Joseph either. So, I think we'll just go for Joker, because why not? It's my favorite uh, villain. <laughs> I'm just playing. Anyways, our driver number, obviously, we've always been number 28. That will always Let's be my number. And next up, it is the clothing and emote. So, basically, the background for this helmet, it's fairly simple. It's a simple helmet, kind of kind of a little bit simple, but it's not too simple. It is basically a basically a mix kind of color because again this helmet could probably change, but right now it's for right now it's gonna be green and black. Um, that's just Bennett, and again I mean my favorite color is green. It's always been my favorite color. Um, I think we're gonna go with a, like a little bit of a lighter green, a little bit, only because I think it would just look a little bit better with the black with the max black yeah that looks really nice and again I, I mean it looks like the helmet is a little bit matte but 
hopefully we can have more customization in the future with when it comes with um, the helmet designs with like a metallic color a matte color kind of like how you can make deliveries I think that would be pretty cool obviously but anyways take a look at some of the uh, overalls here obviously we're not gonna spoil the overalls because that's just gonna spoil the livery I think we're gonna go with a simple one and again it looks like you do have some other overalls to choose from which is the Vegas the Connor Sport and the Max Verstappen store so yeah pretty cool but once again we don't care about that we're not gonna spoil the livery now let's get into the main details of our team Great. now let's set up some of the key details of your new team so simple name is this I think we're gonna do 142s racing why only because it kind of it, it matches like a certain thing there's a certain history with 142 and it mainly comes from a family member so I think 142s is gonna be the thing last year I think it was my first and middle name well I think it was just RJ Motorsports I think we're gonna change it though for 142s racing only because those Mainly those t three numbers kind of match more, but um, I think we'll go with that. Now, some kind of income stream is critical, so we need to sign a primary sponsor. Our primary sponsor will pay a sign and bonus to the team up front. This is vital to cover the early investments we need to make. They'll also provide a valuable weekly income for us. Each sponsor has a goal they want the team to achieve. If we hit that goal, the sponsor will pay us an additional goal bonus. Now it is the hard part, figuring out a sponsor. Um, there's not, there's there's kind of a couple to choose from. Um, there's some that are pretty ridiculous, and there's some that are pretty easy. You see, we got some two points finishes during the season. Zena one, that's pretty interesting. Got Moon complete a full season, but again, I w I want the biggest payout. I think we're gonna go with Xenon Dynamics. Finish eighth in the Constructor Championship. I think that'll be pretty good. The Paris. One does sound interesting, but right now I think we go with Xenon Dynamics. I like the payout. I like the income. Our car won't be going anywhere fast without a power unit. So let's sign a power unit supplier now. We need both performance and durability from our power units, but we also need to balance the books. We're going to have a lot of other areas to invest our cash into. Well, it is now power unit selection, and there's only two power units that I'm really, really looking at, and that is Red Bull and Ferrari. Um, simple as that. I want to go with performance. Mercedes is tempting, but again, it's just too much money, and I need money for a teammate, which I believe you can get a pretty high teammate, but right now I think we're going to go with the Ferrari engine. The performance is amazing, 94, clearly ahead of every other one, but the durability is kind of a bit of a question mark. But I feel like the car might need a little bit of that performance in it, so I think we're going to ultimately sign for Ferrari. Red Bull, though, was very tempting, but you know what? Let's send it. Let's go with Ferrari. We still need a teammate for you. The higher the driver's experience, the more resource points are earned to spend on vehicle upgrades. Drivers earn a claim based on their performances. When a driver earns enough acclaim, they will level up. Well, look who it is. Liam Lawson. I think that might be the, obviously the clear choice of everybody else. Obviously, Dennis Hauger is my favorite F2 driver, but I feel like Liam would be a little bit more better just because of his experience. His pace is a bit of a question mark, but I think overall, I think Liam would be the better prospect. But that's basically the team. Sponsor, Ferrari, and also our teammate. New year, new drivers, new team. Welcome and great to have you with us as we move far away from the paddock to the headquarters of the newest outfit on the Formula One grid. We've been granted exclusive access with an interview not just with the team owner or the star driver, but both. Because for the first time in modern F1 history, the team owner is behind the wheel themselves. Now is a great time to bring a new team into the sport, particularly off the back of such compelling competition last year. 
2022 saw huge regulation changes and it was Red Bull who came out on top in the development race. But that was last year. This year could be a very different story. Let me tell you, this facility is an absolute hive of activity and there is a palpable sense of excitement around the car they've built. Quietly, they truly believe they can challenge at the top and they've had the time now to craft a hugely competitive race car. But theory is one thing and taking on the brightest lights in motorsport is quite another. So how does the owner of F1's 11th team feel as they prepare to be thrust into the limelight of the F1 circus? New driver lineups, Qatar returns, Las Vegas debuts, and the engineering race continues to push the sport and the drivers to new heights. What are they aiming for? Most excited about, most nervous for? Well, soon we will meet them to find out. But first, let's take a look at the brand new car. <laughs> Well, hi, thank you so much for having us. Great to be here. I'm gonna start with the question that everyone is asking. It's been a long time since we've seen a team owner drive their own car, and a lot's changed since then. The sport has really evolved. So how are you gonna manage the responsibility of doing both roles? And tell me about your teammate. They're clearly very excited to have signed with you. What do they bring to the team? So tell me about the work on the car. It's clearly a blank canvas. You've done a lot. What have you prioritized? Now, there's no getting away from the fact that your competitors have a huge amount of Formula One experience. You are a total newcomer. Tell us where you see the opportunities to make those vital performance gains. Now, ultimately, your success this season will be determined by whether you can take positions from other drivers. Where do you believe this car has the edge? With so many disciplines and experts working so closely together here at your HQ, who gets the coveted teacher's gold star? Who are you most proud of as the first race edges ever closer? Well, I could talk to you all day. Thank you so much for your time, but I better let you get back to work. There's plenty more still to do. All the very best for your inaugural F1 season. Well, I hope you all liked that a little bit of a cutscene. And here it is the 142S01, black and orange. Um, I think that was kind of just the, my favorite color combination. I could come up with it, it kind of maybe I guess you could say it kind of looks like I got like a little bit of like a McLaren vibe in it but again I mean I've always just loved the color combination so I believe it's like a metallic orange and like a matte black or it might be matte orange I'm not 100% sure again but obviously I need a couple little things and that is the personal sticker as well <laughs> you don't really have to but simple as that we're also putting sponsors on the car mainly because we don't want the car to be completely empty like we need to at least express that we are a formula one team <laughs> so yeah we'll add sponsors to the car and i think that will be it mainly for the basics as now we jump into our own facility which is team activities and also all this other stuff so obviously i didn't talk all the way through that natalie pinkham video uh interview obviously so that part could have been pretty boring but obviously, basically, the goal for that is you basically want to rep up your 
departments, so powertrain, aerodynamics, chassis, or durability. Obviously, I more focus on basically the three, the three ones, which are powertrain, air, powertrain, aerodynamics, and chassis. Durability is like, I mean, you need durability, but again, I mean, that's just probably the least thing you should focus on for right now, only because you know, it just will help everything. But so we got a couple things on the mail. Obviously, uh, just our departments and also other things. But so far, we got aerodynamics to spec one. So that's pretty good. Basically, fabrication, build process, simple as that. That is done and over with. And obviously, everything else is spec zero, which is kind of unfortunate. But again, I think once we do get that income in cash, I think everything will be used directly good. Which, I mean, I guess you could say going for the cheap power unit would help you. But again, I feel like at the same time, I more just like the idea of just going with the Ferrari only because it is the strongest power unit basically that's kind of why I went for it and um, that again that is probably gonna stay to my heart and hopefully that Ferrari engine does does do pretty well but anyways simple as that we looked at the performance in Nexa we are actually the, f the sixth fastest car we're actually not the slowest car look at you look at that that is not bad at all but anyways, it is time for upgrading the car for the first race weekend, which, barring it's a bit of a power circuit, but again, I think we will need a little bit of front end for this track, so I think we're going to ultimately go for a front downforce upgrade. That will be right on time for barring, and I think we're also going to be doing the pistons, basically just to get more straights, more straight line speed. Uh, it looks like we have to wait a little bit to uh, get some income in, it looks like, because that, that front downforce was... Uh, yeah, looks like uh, we didn't have enough time to put on the powertrain upgrade, so that is unfortunate. But again, we did do that, and um, yeah, so fast forward time, we are now in Bahrain. And also, Pierre is our R&D department manager, simple as that. Obviously, if you ever played my team, this is basically how it goes. They kind of cut you off here and there, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. So, Pierre, you will be nice to me. And hopefully let's make the car faster, me and you. But that's enough of that. We're all ready. And you can see that gap has a huge gap. So it's going to be a bit difficult for the first race. But again, I think we'll all get through it. I think we all got it. We're a Formula 1 team. I think we are going to figure out the ropes as everyone else. It is like your first day of school. You're figuring out everything basically the day as you go on first practice here in Bahrain this is basically our preseason testing because again EA they don't want to implement preseason testing which is kind of unfortunate but at the same time gotta kind of deal with it simple as that anyways we're hearing from Mach a little bit basically Mach is back as our engineer um, I believe he actually was like an old F1 I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> I think he was an old um, F1 engineer, I believe. I could be wrong, though. Um, I guess you could say down in the comments below, rest in peace, Jeff. Again, bring back Jeff. We all want Jeff back. He is the man. But we're going to do a setup here. We're going to do preset full for now. There's really no setups in the game yet to decide everything. But let's not care about that. Let's go take this car on track. And let's go see... What the performance is going to lead to? Why not? Shall we? There'll be a lack of rubber out on track, so take it easy for the first couple of laps. Here we are, finally on track for preseason testing in Bahrain, or I should say FP1, and uh, so far. The car doesn't feel that bad. Um, I honestly thought it was going to be a little bit worse, but no, actually the car does a little bit... It's not bad. It's uh, The brakes are a bit rubbish, though. That is a bit of a problem, but again, I think the brakes will probably be figured out later, later into the season. But once again, suppose that we're out here practicing for Bahrain, practicing the race setup again. The actual race pace doesn't feel that bad. A little bit of a snap there on the exit. Um, again, the car's a bit snappy here and there, but... Ultimately, everything I think will get figured out midway through the season, but look again, just a very kind of small snap, not too much. But anyways, 
practice one is done and uh, I think we can increase the AI just a little bit because they're a little bit too slow in this session but finish P9 in the session it's not a too bad of a session um, 1.3 seconds off the pace though which is not very very good but again that would be easily figured out probably midway through the season as we get used to the car Liam Lawson is P18 though a uh, bit of a rubbish session for him but again he's a rookie you kind of have to expect that the rookie always doesn't again I mean it, it it's always the F2 drivers that don't always perform which is kind of unfortunate in this game but I guess you could say these things happen but basically that was it for FP1 and FP2 simple as that <laughs> as the weekend is done as we now move on into Saturday but you increase the AI just a little bit more practice 2 was very good a lot more data a lot more data gathering as well um, car was a little bit better we did practice a little bit of a qualifying runs obviously because obviously qualifying is going to be very important for the session and we're not known for our one lap pace as I think everybody kind of knows if you watch previous videos I am <laughs> I'm not the greatest at qualifying I'm more of a guy that's better in the race but again the pace isn't bad the car is not bad it could be a lot better but again it's race one let's get on to qualifying here for the Bahrain Grand Prix Let's get it. Qualifying here for the Bahrain Grand Prix, as I could say. And a uh, bit of b bit of a nervous time for me because uh, well it's it's already Saturday it's already Saturday in the virtual world of F1 and that's not what we want because I feel like we didn't really get I feel like the car is a bit I feel like I need a little bit more time in the car because to be fair I mean it's just again it takes me a while to learn a new race car but again let's go out there let's go kick some arse in qualifying today anyways. Getting ready for our first lap, kind of wait a little bit more time just to have the track kind of rubbered in a little bit. And again, the car is a bit sketchy on the brakes. Um, the brakes don't feel very good, um, but again, I mean these things happen. But anyways, getting down turn one, turn two, turn three was very smooth and simple. Going through the next couple of corners here once again. Uh, they did kind of update Byron a little bit right here with this bump. There's a big old bump in the middle of F122. If you instantly hit it, you would just bottom out, and obviously we didn't want that. Um, obviously, uh, the car does feel very, very good in the high speed, but low speed is a bit rubbish. As right there, it took a little too much curb there once again. Still learning the track. Obviously, Bahrain is probably one of the more easier tracks to learn, but again, oh well. <laughs> um, obviously, I don't go so well in Bahrain, but anyways, we're getting ready. Uh, so far, good Sector 1 was pretty promising. Sector 2 might be a little bit more promising here as well, as you can tell. I uh, got a very, very good exit there once again. Super easy to get on the throttle once again. Obviously, the tires are kind of fall off a little bit in the middle of the lap because, again, the tire wear is very high around Bahrain, which is a little bit of a struggle because, obviously, high tire wear isn't really what you want. And, again, this car does just... It just eats the tires alive. It is an absolute joke, in my opinion. But, again... New game, what do you expect? But anyways, that goes P4 that lap. P4 in this car. That, I am very much impressed with that lap myself. Because I didn't even think it was that good of a lap. I didn't even think it was that good. But I think we're going to be safe into Q2. I don't think anybody else will challenge us. I honestly think this car might get into Q2. Let's, fingers crossed. We do, we are in Q2. Three, almost four. Only, only four tenths off. Wow. Off Max Verstappen. <laughs> um, yeah, that might be a little bit of a question mark with the AI. Um, I think the AI a little bit too slow, but there are the drivers that are out. Hulkenberg's out. Guan Yu's out. Magnussen, Lawson, Sargent, DeFries. So, Liam's out in Q1, unfortunately. That probably, probably right around P12, P16 is probably where the car should be. But again, I think that that could just be down to poor AI because, again, I didn't really get a good understanding 
of the AI. I didn't expect the AI to be this quick. Um, I thought the AI would be a little bit slower, but nope. Seems like the AI are pretty, pretty quick around here. Um, not pretty quick. It looks like they're pretty slow on low AI, but around high AI, they should be pretty good. But anyways, P5 for the first lap here. We're on a used set of softs. Um, Gasly and Norris did peep us there a little bit, but again, we are now in the cutoff spot of Q2. This could see us into Q3 here if we do get a good lap, and we are in the drop. We are in the cutoff spot once again, as I said, but again, this is a brand new set of soft tires, so let's go down to turn number one. Let's go see how the car does. Turn one, very simple as that. Some good rotation, a little bit. Not not so good of an exit. Once again, a little bit of a snap there once again in the middle of the corner, which is obviously not what you want. We lost a little bit of time there about two tenths now off gonna probably lose about three tenths here coming through this next couple of corners again break a little bit later than before but again it ran out wide and also that kind of compromised everything is again another snap midway through seven tenths now off I we're not gonna improve this lap time this is gonna very much be a bad lap but we're still gonna push on just a little bit but I think right around this time we want to save these sets um, again another snap two snaps in a row that is <laughs> that is a bit of compromising in this car but again I think right now we're just gonna back out of it we're not gonna get far if we just keep on pushing on let's save this set let's go box in this lap and let's go see if we can get into Q3 fingers crossed here once again do we get into Q3 no we don't we just miss out on Q3 by a couple by at least about a tenth looks like looks like hmm I don't know who did get us there. I think I'll maybe Oscar Piastri did peep us a little bit and also Espen Alcon they peep us there but that is a pretty solid qualifying from us though p12 in the first race though we'll have to increase the ai though just a little bit because again they are pretty slow so i think we might go up to about 100 but um so far those are bad those those solid months of rumor and speculation all come to an end today as we return to racing for the opening event of what promises to be an enthralling season Welcome along then to round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. We go racing today around the 3.36 miles of the magnificent Bahrain International Circuit with 15 corners and two good passing opportunities into turns one and four. Keep an eye out for drivers locking the front left tire into the tricky braking zone of turn 10. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Sainz, Hamilton, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Ocon, Gasly, Oscar Piastri, Joker, Stroll, Norris, Sonoda, Bottas, Albon, Hulkenberg, Joe, Magnussen, Liam Lawson, Sargent, Liam Lawson. Now it's time to head down to the track. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as once again we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. Oh boy, the tensions. The adrenaline is high for race one here in Bahrain. As again, we did get promoted to P11 there. Obviously, Leonard Norris had some sort of penalty. Could have been an engine penalty. Could have been something. I don't know what happened. Could have been impeding. Who knows? But again, just taking a look at the strategy. I think we're going to go for the medium to the hard. Simple as that. We do have a little bit of a mixed strategy. It looks like Albon on the soft. And it looks like Lance Stroll on the soft. So Stroll is absolutely going to be flying on this. And Sergio Perez also on the soft too. So... Again, I like the AI strategy. I really do like that because, again, I feel like the AI do need... I feel like the AI, when it comes to mixed strategies, that is what we want. But anyways, done with that. Formation lap is done. We are now underway for the Bahrain GP. Lights out, and away we go for race one here in Bahrain. Once again, we get a decent start ahead. We actually do get a little bit of a better start compared to everybody else. Launch, uh, Fernando Alonso did get the best start. Oscar Piastri did get a little bit of a mess start, but once again... Down to turn number one once again. A little bit of a contact there with Oscar Piastri once again. Beating a bang going on down into turn number two as well. Again, Alonzo and Piastri side by side once again. Dumping all our overtake here once again. The AI do dump a lot of overtake on lap one. I 
here obviously once again Pierre Gasly fighting this pretty hard again we're gonna go around the outside of Oscar Piastri as much as we can do we get this move stick once again going around the outside of Oscar Piastri here side by side now through into the next center S is here once again do we get the move done Piastri a little bit get, gets a little bit of rubber sex and went to though a little bit and we get the move ahead of Oscar Piastri now on lap number one of this race now that promotes us into P9 at the start of this race but it is not over yet though because again this is only lap one they are 29 laps remaining left in this race here once again obviously fighting off hard though with Fernando Alonso here trying to get into the DRS but once again he's just absolutely on a mission here today Oscar Piastri though he's coming back a little bit though he's gonna think about a move no he doesn't run a little bit wide though obviously through that next couple of corner uh, again still getting used to the brakes obviously brakes are a bit rubbish as I said before I feel like the brakes will be a little bit rubbish until we get some brake upgrades but we desperately need some and again brake bias is a little bit iffy though once again because again running 50-50 is just not the way to go in this game and it's just it's not it it is not it <laughs> obviously Espinal and Fernando Alonso now they're going side by side former teammates obviously at Alpine there once again they're going side by side Oscar Piastri does have other plans as you remember that is a former teammate sort of when it came to RJ Motorsports back in F122 he absolutely demolished us in our first year but again we're gonna get the revenge back here we're gonna set Piastri down the inside we're gonna go around the outside just a little bit to defend and we're gonna get that move done ahead and look at this battle up here once again Fernando Alonso and Espen Ocon we got basically top tier view once again but Fernando Alonso does clear Espen Ocon and he shuts the door on Ocon very early in this race and now on lap two it is basically now just everybody is settling in as we are settling in pretty well we're in the points and I think at this point we're just gonna lift and coast um, just basically that's just how I race I do a lot of lifting and coasting in the race just to basically you know just to cut off some time and obviously I mean the fuel might be a little bit too much I could have probably underfueled just a little bit but again the fuel load is always good to get you always kinda want the fuel load just a little bit high for race one because again you don't know how much fuel you could dump in this car and I feel like the car might use a lot of fuel but again I think what's very new also to this game though is I've, I've as I've seen in previous videos it looks like the engine though does run hot so obviously lifting and coasting will be pretty good for the engine just a little bit but again I could be wrong call me if I'm wrong obviously I it could have been again I just seen a video of engines running hot in F123 my team so again that's kind of why I got and gained a little bit of just a little bit of stuff basically knowing that okay looks like I'll have to be sort of lifting and coasting just to make just not to use too much of the engine and have the engine kind of cool down a little bit which is pretty good but again Bahrain it's a little bit low temperatures right now obviously so I feel like the engines probably won't run too hot but once again lifting and coasting is just gonna basically just just to save fuel just to get a good kind of representation basically of what the car is going to achieve but once again Piastri is shutting that door a lot and he is closing a lot here once again with us lifting and coasting constantly but also basically after that it's kind of a bit of a Mickey Mouse game because obviously we're just trying to maximize this car's potential and again we don't want anything dumb to happen to us but anyways Piastri going around the outside here once again we shut the door on Piastri moving up into P9 as we are still P9 we did not lose position thank god as it looks like the Piastri didn't get the greatest section here. He now has pure Gasly all over his tail, which Gasly is probably going to be coming at a rapid pace. That Alpine is pretty quick on race pace, and again, I think Gasly might get Piastri once again. I believe they're still side by side. Piastri just gets the move back. Gasly now gets the back. Once again, the very intense battle there going back for P10, but again, I think ultimately Gasly does get this fight, and he will. And he will probably be right on the, right on the bumper of our car. Very simple. And our yellow flag is up ahead, and that's actually for the Haas of Kevin Magnussen Magnussen is out of this Grand Prix only on lap 7 and that is one of the Ferrari powered cars should I be a little bit worried? <laughs> a little bit of worry signs on our side because again there's a Ferrari car going out here once again oh we made contact with Pierre Gasly that is not what you want to see thankfully no front wing damage which is pretty good you do not want front wing damage because front wing damage is bad for your car but we ultimately get away with it, which is pretty good. I like to get away with some cheeky front damage. And again, I think the damage is on. I think we eventually will run simulation damage, but again, I don't know. I, I just feel like simulation damage is kind of a little bit too much at times. And it's again, it's a little bit stupid. So 
that's in my opinion, but again, I probably will run sim damage, maybe in the future, I'll, ultimately I'll, I'll figure it out, we'll see, but anyways, yellow flag behind us, I believe that might be Nico Hulkenberg, and that is Nico Hulkenberg here once again, in the Haas, um, I don't know what's happened to him, we might get a replay on what happened to Hulkenberg, no we don't, um, that could have been an engine malfunction, that could have been something wrong, completely bad, but we're here once again checking the vehicle condition, uh, tires are a bit rubbish there once again, and obviously, oh, we get a big snap there, and we do hit the outside, we hit the inside wall, and that is front wing damage already, in the first race already, come on, well, we are an absolute bottle job, <laughs> uh, simple as that, just a little bit of a kiss, it wasn't, it, it doesn't, it, the car doesn't feel too bad, though we luckily did get away with it, but again, that is not what you want to see on race one. You want to have a clean race, and ooh, that is ooh, that is a bad look so far on 142s racing. <laughs> that is not a good look once again, mate. But again, we'll keep pushing forward. We'll keep moving on, because obviously, that's what we be doing. Bit of a uh, bit of a bit iffy though. Kind of start to the to the race though, just a little bit. Um, we lose a bit of time so far. We're approaching another halfway distance of this race um the car does feel a little bit good but again the race pace is kind of slowing off a lot and it's mainly because of the tires because the tires are just they just they are they're cracked the tires are cracked they're just completely demolishing me and it's so unfair <laughs> it is so unfair but again it's unfortunate but again Charles Leclerc he came into the pits he pitted for the hot tire which is pretty good so Leclerc's Byron Grand Prix is going a little bit better than in real life because he DNF'd hopefully that's not a jinx but <laughs> um, so yeah anyways fast forward the clips here once again on lap 14 we are boxing this lap as I'm not gonna stay out another lap we're just gonna box the tires are rubbish very very rubbish indeed but anyways coming into the pits now for the first stop of this race and the only stop of this race we're gonna go for the hot tire here once again oh, oh, Esteban Ocon is in the pits as well. I uh, think one of the McLarens are coming into the pits as well. That is Lando Norris. He's coming into the pits here once again. We're not going to change the front wing, though. We're going to keep the front wing the same. We're not even going to bother to touch it once again. Bit of a slow stop. 2.5. Not it wasn't too bad, but again, pit crew's a little bit rubbish. But again, I think ultimately it comes down to mainly on my turn in as well. But Lance Stroll, though, has undercut us. He has actually got out ahead of me, which is not what I want to see. I do not want to see Lance Stroll be ahead of me, and that is actually going to force us to be out of the points. And that is not what you want in race one, because again, we were comfortably in the points, but again, it just seemed like Stroll just ultimately got ahead. That, this could have been from the front wing damage, obviously. A safety car or a red flag would be amazing right now, but again, I just think it's just so early on that it's just gonna, it's, it's just gonna be a bit rough. But again, lap 17 now. The basically the whole point of this race is to at this point survive and just to catch data with the AI, just to see how quick the AI, AI are once again. We are having a drag race with Lando Norris. We're gonna go around the outside of Lando Norris. We're gonna give Lando as much room as we can. Again, got a little bit wide there once again. Almost made contact with Lando. We're gonna shut the door on Lando a little bit just to basically just squeeze them out a little bit and that's going to move us up into p11 and we are going to stay there once again lap 18 now lando's coming back at us here once again i think this whole race is just going to be me battling lando and i do not want to let him go because again this mclaren is going to be one of the big fights maybe of this season it depends on how much of the bit of the development race goes on but again we are going to get ahead of lando here as we will clear lando as of right now but again anything can change later in this lap as anyways so far Lando oh Albon and the whole the whole gang basically is back there no Liam Lawson though unfortunately so Liam is actually behind Logan Sargent but I believe mainly the Alpha Tari the Alpha Romeos and might I think one of the no I think that's really it so it's just a lot of the midfield is back here as again I think the Alpines and Aston Martins are going to be mainly the the cars that are going to be fighting for points week in and week out. I think they're obviously just going to hog all the point bank positions here today. 
And I think for the whole season because, again, it's just what it is in real life. And, again, the real performance index is really hasn't really hasn't came out. But, again, I just think that it's going to be a lot harder to score points again this season. But, again, Lando Norris now has other plans as he wants to get ahead of us here once again. He's absolutely going to get us here. Again, we're going to get in the slipstream, though. We're going to dump all our overtake here on Lando Norris. Again, you can just see how much faster we are on the straight line compared to Lando. As we're going to go around the outside. We, oh, we made a little bit of contact there with the McLaren. That's obviously not what you want to see. As uh, clearly my awareness is kind of out the bin. As I did not look long enough. A bit of a late overtake. But once again, obviously us squabbling is making us lose a lot of time to launch stroll. But again, I don't be, I'm don't. i not going to be expecting to fight in Aston Martin for the points paying positions there once again. Running a little bit wide there. Lando does have other plans. But again, Lando ultimately backs out of those plans. As again, he cannot get ahead. But we move on. And we continue down, downhill. Very difficult part of the track to break. Make sure you get that nice run and I guess, again, that nice apex there. As you can tell right there, good apex leads to good cornering speed. And a good exit. But obviously now, once again, on lap 23 of this race, approaching nearly the end of the race now. Again, we're just defending from Lando Norris here. Once again, it's just basically survival to see if we can beat out Lando here. Once again, we're going to go around down on the inside. We're going to give Lando a little bit of a squeeze there. Once again, the tires are... Coming off just a little bit. Tires are a bit rubbish now through this middle stint of the race. And again, we'll get a full race update there once again. It's just tracking the lap, the lap tension from behind. Lando is a little bit quicker, but we are a little bit faster than Alex Albon through the middle part of the race, I believe, because Albon was just through the corners and stuff like that. It was just a lot faster than the AI and through the corners here. Once again, Lando, again, def goes around the outside. He does not. He gets the door shut on him by me. And again, now him and Alex Albon are now battling for those positions once again for P12 in this race here. Once again, as this defense is absolutely brilliant from us as we're defending as much as we can. Obviously, it's not good, but again, we're not going to score points today. So again, it's just at this point, we're just surviving. And again, fighting these out in the Williams and the McLaren is going to be crucial for us because again these are the guys that we're going to be fighting in this race and through probably the whole season and again Nat Williams is absolutely rapid in the straight line here once again obviously that is one thing that Alex Albon is good at as again he's going to go around the ins he's going to go down the inside we're going to go around the outside I'm honestly thinking about doing a switch rear here once again but again I think Albon might get the edge on us again we couldn't really fight that Williams too hard he was just so quick down the straights the McLaren is just it's just a draggy call to deal with but again Lando could be all over the back of us here in the next lap or so. The tires did fall off a lot in this stint. And um, again, it's just, the, it's going to be the memo of the season. I think the tires are going to fall off there once again, out breaking ourselves there. Once again, we go out wide, and again, we're going to have to join back on the track safety there. We're going to get a little bit squirrely exited with Lando once again. We do make more contact with Lando again. I don't know what we were doing. Uh, I couldn't get off the gas. I was just so committed to just trying to get past Lando. and. That basically lost us another position there because of all that wheel spin we got from that from our car. And again, just a wide exit. That front wing is absolutely just coming off left and right. And again, we give Oscar just enough space just so we can have a clear fight. Because again, Oscar lives to fight another day. And we also live to fight another day. But again, the battle will continue, obviously, with Oscar Piastri coming right back at us in our rear wing and again Piastri might get this move down here he's gonna go on the inside we're gonna keep the racing line here once again it's now side by side we again we get the straight line speed compared to Oscar Piastri we're gonna go just enough space we're gonna go around the outside just a little bit to give Piastri that space again we're gonna get ahead of Oscar and that moves us up in the P12 once again for this race I don't think he actually passes the line though but again that could be a drag race down to the final lap if anything could change again we turned in a little bit too early again just losing a bit of my concentration here through the middle of the race. Again, just struggling behind with the tires and everything like that. And Lando and Albon just were gone. They just disappeared out of the blue. Lando did get ahead of Albon after all. But again, down defending from Oscar Piastri. And once again, Piastri with the absolute rocket ship in the straight line again. We're gonna, he's going to outbreak us again. He's going to go down the inside again. We're going to now fight this up into the next couple of corners through turn number four here once again get a good exit we get a better exit compared to Oscar Piastri to Piastri might defend the inside so we're gonna go around the outside we're gonna dummy him just a little bit there go around the outside of Oscar Piastri do we get this move stick around the outside as much as we can get a little bit wide marbles absolutely all over the tires there once again and we're gonna get the move done as we do get Oscar Piastri at the line and Sergio Perez is gonna come along and win the Bahrain Grand Prix but while his race is over 
this battle is not for mainly just the last points paying positions there once again just a bit of a tricky snap through, through this corner Liam Lawson his pace was pretty good <laughs> through the mid races he's now joined this pack and again just look at the train of cards that I have behind me we got Botas we got Joe we got Sonoda everybody's in this fight now for the points paying for the non points paying positions but again just for track position as again we're just we're basically just fighting for nothing we're just all having fun I guess but again just right here through this corner the front wing was absolutely abysmal and again Piash is gonna get the inside we're gonna go around the outside we're gonna get the much better exit though we do get a better exit again we have to dump all our overtake here down through this last lap through the last couple of corners Piash thinking about a move no he does a boat task he could think about a move here once again but he's not gonna do it but we're gonna come across the line we had a fun race out there today it could have been points but it's only gonna be P13 for us that is not a bad result we get P13 in race one. That is some good data gathering for race one. It was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today. Well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today, but what set them apart from the rest? Well, they certainly stood out as a drive with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalize on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sports that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. Well, there is your podium. Sergio Perez wins the Bahrain Grand Prix. And also Charles Leclerc comes home in P2. And Max Verstappen comes home in P3. That one. Okay. So it looks like Sergio is uh, beating Max in the virtual F1 games. That is uh, if only he can do that in real life. Why, he, why, why, why won't he give us a title fight? I'm just joking, but um, yep, simple as that. You're, hey, look at that. Leclerc got P2. He did DNF. I thought he was gonna. <laughs> That's funny. But again, that is it for race one here in Bahrain. As you can tell, P13. About finished a minute off the leaders, though. I think it was just a lot from that squabbling for those positions later in the race. Fernando Alonso gets P7. And Lance Scholl does get the last point thing positions. Liam Lawson, though, he got P18, though, which is not bad on debut. He did beat Logan Sargent. Could, uh, maybe a little bit on Pierre Pace. Maybe got a little bit of luck there. Maybe just a little bit. But again, looking at the constructor standings, we are actually sitting P8 comfortably ahead. Obviously, we wanted points. We didn't get the points, which is unfortunate. But again... I feel like with this pace that we've seen from Bahrain, I think honestly if this continues on, we could probably get points and maybe in the next couple of races. And again, it just mainly depends on mainly a couple things. If the car will hold out, because again, durability is still going to be a bit of a question mark with the Ferrari engine. So but that is one thing we have to keep in mind is if the car will hold out. If the car doesn't hold out, obviously it's going to it's, it's, it's gonna be a struggle. And again, I, we just need this car to stay with us as long as it can. Because again, if it if the car doesn't stay with us, then we're just gonna we're just gonna be in the we're gonna we're gonna be one pile of poop. We're gonna be a big pile of poop later in the season. And again, I just again I just think if we just from this pace from today, this car can clearly fight for the points. I'm confident. And again, it's just again. The car just feels so much better to drive. It, again, if when you get this game, the my team car is not bad to drive. The brakes are a bit iffy, but again, it is not bad to drive. But the one thing though you do have to keep in mind though is that your tires do fall off a lot. And through this race, we were suffering from really, really bad tire deg and tire wear, which we will need some future upgrades through the chassis department. To get those tire wear upgrades on because again tires are gonna be probably gonna be the problem i think as we go later into the season so that is one thing to keep in mind but again i hope everybody enjoyed this video today sorry that my commentary is a bit off um and again sorry i didn't post yesterday i was just i 
I just had stuff that came up and again it's just I try to post every day for y'all but again it's just hard to post every day when I got everything going on it's just I, I hope everybody understands but again it's alright we have a lot of summer to kill so we're gonna go give these boys hell later in the season but anyways thank y'all for watching this video if y'all would please like and subscribe that would be greatly appreciated that will help me out here once again and in return you might get a sub back but anyways have a good rest of your day y'all stay safe out there and i'll see y'all in the next one